transform any image into morphing animations, I'll demonstrate a step-by-step -step approach for creating such impressive animations like these with Comfy UI. We'll go through the full process to get all the models downloaded and I'll disclose the right settings I used to achieve my final results, which will help you to avoid some of the troubles I faced throughout the process. To get this rolling, we first have to visit Civit AI to download the workflow which was created by IPIV. Thank you to IPIV for making this available and sharing this with the community. Once this has been downloaded, I'll load the JSON file into Comfy UI. Uh, you may come across a few missing nodes. To fix this, we have to use the manager and click install missing nodes. In here, click all the boxes for any missing nodes and click install. Once everything is done, close and also update all to make sure all your extensions are updated. Restart Comfy UI and this should fix all the missing nodes. So let's break down the workflow and zoom in in here. Let's begin with the settings group. We need to download a few models. First is the Animate the V3 adapter. So just highlight, right click to follow the link which is provided by the workflow. Download and save this into the folder, Models LoRa folder. Our second requirement is the Hyper SD LoRa. If you don't have this, highlight and right click to follow the link as well. Download this and save it once again into the LoRa folder. For more details about the Hyper SD LoRa, you can also visit the page here for more information. Next, for the checkpoint node, any SD 1.5 model should work just fine and match the VAE according to the checkpoint you go with. For the latent image node, will be the dimensions for the final video, so make sure to keep this as the SD 1.5 ratio size. The positive and the negative nodes, this can be left empty because the workflow does not need a prompt since this uses a reference image for the animation. Zooming out and scrolling up to the animate div group. So in here, the workflow uses the V3 SD 1.5 model. If you don't have this, highlight the link in the notes, right click and go to the link and also save this into your custom notes, animate div evolve models folder. Next to the right is the IP adapter group. So the original workflow uses the VITG model, but you can try out other models from the list here as well. To download any of the models, highlight the link provided in the notes. Save this under your Comfy UI models folder, clip vision folder. Also make sure the IP adapter model should be downloaded and placed into your Comfy UI directory models IP adapter. From here, we scroll down to have the control net group. The load video node needs a black and white video mask to guide the animation. On the page here, you can find some free video loops to use and try out. Also, I like to visit Motion Array for more complex video loops, and I'll show how this works later in the video. Next, you need a QR code control net model to guide the animation's movement. To get the QR code model, follow the link here, download the model, and place it in the folder under Models, Control Net. To the right is the sampler nodes, which gives us four different final outputs. We also have the upscale group on top, the frame interpolation, and the color correct group. I'll turn this off for now since I can update the color correction in post and push it to the side. So after the entire breakdown of the nodes, let's try the workflow to morph some images. So zooming in here, I have already prepared the prompt and images I want to be morphing, and I'll drag and drop them all into the load image nodes one after the other. So scrolling to the left to the settings group, I'm going to change the load checkpoint and I'll go for the Disney Pixar cartoon checkpoint to use. I'll use a one by one ratio, which is uh, 512 by 512. Next, I'll scroll up to the IP adapter group. In here, I'll change the unified loader model to use the plus high strength. Also, I'll change the weight type to easing out for all the nodes inside the IP adapter group. I realized this came out with the best results with most of the animations. Scrolling down to the control net group, before loading the video loop, I'll search the node to use the load video upload. I'll move this down and reconnect the nodes. I'll move this up once it's done. I'll click to load the video math loop into the node. So I'm using the load video upload because I prefer to see the preview of the loop video mask. I'll also change the frame rate here to 12 to match up to the video loop. Inside the advanced control net node, I'll make this a little bit higher to influence the morphing process. I'll change the strength here to 0.7 and also the end percent to 0.5. Moving to the sampler nodes, I'll change the steps here to 20. I'll set the sampler name to Jurla and also the scheduler to normal. On the right node, I'll also change this to 20 steps. I'll keep this to Jurla as well. Also change the scheduler to normal and I'll keep the denoise strength to 0.5. For the video combined nodes to generate a higher quality animation results, you can lower the CRF. I'll change this to 5 for all the video combined nodes. To the upscale group, since I'm using a 1 by 1 ratio, I'll also update this to 1080 by 1080 
to match up to the aspect ratio. I'll decrease this to 2x upscale so the file is not too large and also I don't run out of memory on my VRAM. From here, I'll hit the Q prompt and let's see the results from the IPIV workflow. Let's skip this uh, to see the final outcome of the animation. So this is quite impressive. This is already looking great and amazing how the IP adapter and QR code are morphing between the reference images. I would advise to start with a preview and once happy, you can move on to the upscaling process. If you want to change this to a vertical dimension, you can go back to the latent image here to update the width and the height. Keep this at a lower resolution and also don't forget to change the upscale ratio to match to the frame size. Q prompt once again, I'll skip to the results and we still get this stunning amazing results from the workflow in a vertical dimension. From here, this is optional, but I would like to take the final video into the software for Topaz Video AI. I'll change the frames to 60 frames. I'll close down the frame interpolation menu and I'll use the enhancement settings. I'll change this to manual. I'll move this to 100 and also the details to 100. I'll sharpen this to 10. Next, I'll move this to be 30 and anti-blur goes to 100. From here, I'll keep the encoder to be H.264 and I'll change this from MOV to have an MP4 video file. From here, you can save this anywhere you prefer. So we can see the improved details from Topaz AI even after upscaling this inside Comfy UI. Topaz gives the animation an extra smooth morph by using the 60 frames per second interpolation. So these are the Topaz video settings I usually use to further improve my results. If there are any bad results through the process, make sure all the models are downloaded and selected in the right notes. So in the comment section, I hope this helps to answer some of your questions. Leave a like as always and to get started with the IP adapter or QR code, you can view any of these videos to guide you.